Today's reflection is inspired by Acts of Apostle, chapter 2, verse 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. The first verse of today's reading from the second chapter of Book of the Acts of Apostle is challenging to many of us because it reminds us that we cannot, all we cannot do since the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis. As it was the case with Easter, we're celebrating an important day in Christianity, away from one another outside our beloved buildings. We cannot gather like the first disciple did, and some of us wonder, how can we be how can we be the church and embody the spirit of Pentecost in such times as these? I would like to believe that you know the story of the Pentecost. Fifteen fifty, sorry, fifty days after the first Easter morning, Jesus' disciples were gathered together under the same roof. They were waiting for the fulfillment of the promise made by Jesus. Before his ascension, you see, he said to his disciple, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So that day everything was calm and normal. Until a sound, like a rush of a violent wind, filled the entire house divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and tongue rested on each of them all of them were filled with the holy spirit and we might say what a beautiful story that could have easily ended there the disciple had received their promised precious gift they could have enjoy it among themselves they could have organized little bible study and and preaching master class for one another they could have stayed inside their house and lived their faith away from the rest of the world that had rejected their master not that long ago but fortunately the story did not finish there probably filled with excitement and emotions they opened the doors of their house and began to engage the people dwelling on the marketplace. And since Jerusalem was a large city according to the standards of the ancient world, well, many came to do business, worship, or visit family and friends. These visitors and Pilgrim were from different Jewish communities settled across the Roman Empire, and all of them developed over time their own regional language, traditions, customs. They were from all those places we find difficult to pronounce today. So finding a common ground, establishing communication must have been a huge challenge for people back then. And yet, a bunch of uneducated Galileans suddenly began to speak to the crowd in such a way that everyone understood. Despite their difference, they could all wear, they could, sorry, they could all hear what the disciples were saying, each in their own language. Then Peter spoke and we're told after the end of today's reading that 3,000 people joined their movement that day. Wow. Well, during the last few weeks, many are wondering when we will reopen our churches. And personally, I believe this is the wrong question because the church has never been closed. Because 
we have been told over and again that the church is way much more than a building. We know that the Spirit of God cannot be contained by walls, a roof, and stained glass windows, as beautiful as they can be. And yet, uh, there's a part of us that like to gather inside of buildings because it's convenient, it's familiar, it's a control environment, it's safer for us. We can live our faith inside these walls without having to worry about anything else. Some even turn their church into a country club, reserved for distinguished members only. They have created a refuge to escape the reality of our world. However, the story of Pentecost does not teach us that our mandate is to stay put, get comfy, and hope that people might cross the doors of our church one day. Because a church that stays inside its buildings cannot fulfill its mission. Our call is to be the church wherever the people are. Our call is to go into the world and share the good news of what God is doing in times such as these. When we choose to engage with friends and strangers, when we accept to learn from one another, when we even risk to be vulnerable, we can discover how the Spirit of God is already at work in our world. And we all know that the society grew more and more tribal as regions, cities, and even fake community turn on each other out of suspicion and selfishness. Divisions are trade al ar divisions are, are trace along linguistic, socio-economic, and racial lines. The terrible images we have been seeing from the U.S. the last few days, almost week, are just one reminder of this cruel reality. And the story of Pentecost goes against this climate of fear, anxiety, and anger. We are reminded that in God, all are invited, all are included, male and female, old and young, poor and rich, and there's no small prince stating that some restriction may apply. No, 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 no. All the human-made obstacle can be overcome by the sweeping wind of the Spirit of God. The diversity of humankind should never be considered a curse, but a blessing. All those different culture, language, background, life experience, enrich the experience of the church. The bridge we can build with members of other denomination and faith groups can only deepen our faith and spirituality. When we dare leaving a building to meet with, say, different kind of people, we have we discover the possibility to see them as sisters, as brothers, as friends, as important human beings. When we widen our circle to accept strangers, even those with a funny accent, we live and we embody the spirit of Pentecost. And we were face to face, you would probably tell me that, oh yeah, all of this is beautiful, but it's easier to say than to do, my friend. And you would be absolutely right. Our denomination, like many others, have lost the knowledge, the tradition, the know-how, I would say, of sharing your stories in ways every person can understand. In fact, the term evangelization has become, within the United Church of Canada, nothing less than a four-letter word that should not be mentioned. Don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating for the methods of the past that led to horrible crimes and humiliation of many of our human brothers and sisters. No, no, no. It's just I just believe that our stories deserve to be shared like the other stories that are out there. 
And the good news is that we are not alone in this. The same Holy Spirit that moved those unequipped and unprepared Galileans outside their house is still at work today with us. The same Spirit of God is still speaking to all of us. The same driving force is still empowering us and moving us to do more than we thought we could accomplish in our lives. You see, the book of the Acts of the Apostles is all about mission, all about proclaiming the good news to people everywhere and in languages and words they can understand. And today's text is a perfect illustration of this. On the day of Pentecost, the disciple began to be the church outside their building. And the Holy Spirit led them to transcend the multiple layers of human differences in order to accomplish God's purpose. What start as a simple gathering of friends in a small room turned into a movement, including strangers living in a much larger world, filled with beauty and possibility. And one day, when this pandemic will be over, we will have to remember that we cannot simply retreat and hide in our buildings. We will still be called to be God's church wherever we go and with whomever we meet every day. And for this, for this call, thanks be to God. And Amen.